All right, everyone. So we are now joined by uh, Dr. Leroy Hill, Director Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. And we also have with us uh, this morning uh, Professor uh, Pedro Antonio Nogara, um, and they're here to speak about an open uh, lecture. Now, Professor uh, Nogara is from the USC uh, Rossi School of Education, University of Southern California. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. And Marlon, thank you for having us. Of course. And we are really certainly privileged to be sharing information about this special uh, premium open lecture sponsored by Guardian. It's a partnership that we've had with Guardian for since 2000. And so Settle, um, the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, uh, certainly is uh, honored to have Professor Noguera with us uh, for this lecture, but I'll allow, allow you uh, him to speak more <laughs> about, about, about this here. <laughs> yeah. But tell us about the about the open lecture. So the open lecture, the the theme for this lecture will be we you know we really want to reflect on what does it mean to have uh, a, a success given the post pandemic setting. What does that look like? And it really forces us to um, redefine um, for us. Uh, education success. We recognize that there are many challenges, but those challenges can be turned into opportunities for us to rethink. Um, and I think Professor Noguera is the excellent person to really allow us to, to do that. We, we, it's a cross-section, so we invite um, our parents, teachers, secondary, primary school teachers, higher education, and it's, it's really an open lecture uh, to allow persons to really subscribe and, and uh, reflect together as a group from a community-based standpoint. Yeah. Professor? Um, what's the message that you're bringing to us in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, it's good to be with you. Uh, good to be back in Trinidad. I'm a Trinidadian myself, uh, though I live in the States. Uh, I, I think the message is that education is the key to our future. If you think about most of the problems facing the world today, we're going to have to figure out, how, learn how to solve those problems. That means that our youth need an education that provides them with the problem-solving ability, the resourcefulness, the creativity, the critical thinking to confront these problems that previous generations um, passed on to them. And, uh, and the problems they're inheriting are large. Uh, climate change, uh, poverty, inequality, war, disease. Uh, and so how do we use education as a resource for the future? And that raises the question of whether or not the approach we take now in our schools and our universities is going to lend us to a new way of thinking as we confront these problems. Dr. Hill, why is this uh, lecture so important right now? This, this lecture is, is important right now because we are at a, uh, I, I would say, a disruptive time uh, in education. The, the COVID-19 has really disrupted many things uh, for persons and uh, persons are questioning a lot of things. And uh, with the rise in recent artificial intelligence, uh, with the whole idea of le uh, um, learning loss, uh, individuals are, are concerned about um, what does education, true education look like. And so this lecture series causes us to be critically creative at the same time in forcing us to rethink uh, how do we manage uh, and how do we define uh, successful from a student-centered lens. Um, and so we are fortunate to have been again partnering with Guardian. Uh, these become a series of, uh, for us to uh, um, be critical about issues that are pertaining to education, not just higher education, even though it's sponsored uh, from a higher education standpoint, but we, we, we want to look at it from a nation building standpoint. Yeah. Professor, you feel that some of the issues that you all face in the, in the U.S. are some of the same issues that we are facing in, in Trinidad and Tobago, and because of that, it is easy to transfer the information and the knowledge that you have, um, and, and so you can identify with what is happening here. Absolutely. Many of the same problems. As I was coming here this morning and I saw the large number of um, homeless people on the street, mentally ill homeless people are here on the streets of Port of Spain. We have the very same problem in Los Angeles um, with many uh, unhoused people, mentally ill, substance abusers on our streets. And that's just what you see. Climate change is a threat to the whole world. Global migration, millions of people who are forced to leave their homes in search of a better, more secure future. These problems are, are affecting this generation. That's the reason why we're seeing so much depression, anxiety, rising suicide rates. The only way to counter that fear is with clear thinking 
and with the ability to problem solve about our future. And that's what education must prepare our young people with. They must be able to not just have courage, but have the means and the, the thinking to begin to address these problems in new ways, because old ways of thinking got us to where we are. So new tools, um, and I don't believe that AI and artificial intelligence or new forms of technology are necessarily the solution, but in the hands of the right people can be harnessed to begin to address some of these problems. And we have to prepare those people in our schools and universities today. Yeah, Dr. Hill, uh, let's focus a little bit on, on some of the components of, of this lecture, um, some of the topics that you all are going to be focusing on. So some of the sub-themes that, that came out from our deliberation include the whole idea of wellness. We've seen that, um, and what does that look like? Um, um, teacher wellness, student wellness, uh, physical, emotional, mental, uh, it is one of those holistic um, um, themes for holistic wellness when it comes to education success. A lot of persons are suffering through, um, uh, you know, fatigue, <laughs> learning yes. fatigue in very different ways. And, um, you know, certain themes have been explored uh, to, to, to really give rise to us really rethinking what are we doing from our, our values-based standpoint. Uh, it's not just the brain that we are, we are educating, we are educating the whole individual. And so it really forces us to rethink um, and that we're also looking at themes of technology, innovation strategies to allow us to really meet the learners in a multiple pathway standpoint. In a very meaningful way, we recognize that uh, students are different and, and we have to really up our game when it comes to the strategies that we use. And so these are some of the sub-themes that we will be uh, explicating throughout the open lecture. And Professor Noguera, as I said, is, is a perfect pers person to really allow us to, to begin those critical creative discussions to, to come out. Yeah. Uh, Professor, but hasn't the concept of education, has it not changed? Because I, I know in Trinidad and Tobago, um, from time immemorial, we always focused on the academics. And, you know, Dr. Hill, and I shook my head when he said it, that there was always the feeling in Trinidad and Tobago that if you're not academically inclined, well, then you're not good at all. Let's, let's, let's find a heap and put you there. But, you know, I was, I was pleasantly surprised to hear Dr. Hill speak about different individuals and different students and certain people um, who have certain gifts. So the concept of education had, had to change and has changed. Yeah, no, he's raising very important points about the need for a more holistic approach. Of that course. is acknowledging that the social needs of a person, whether or not they have food, housing, et cetera, will affect their performance in school. So you have to think holistically about our students. At the same time, you have to think about the teachers. Are they prepared? What do they need to be able to meet the needs of those students? And then you have to think about uh, how the curriculum, that is what they learn, needs to be modified so that, in fact, we're preparing them for the world. Right now, what the evidence shows is that the backgrounds of our students largely determine how well they will do. That is, those who come from wealthier families with more education, their children tend to do better. Those who have less, who have greater needs, tend to do less well. How do we create schools where your background does not determine how much you will accomplish? And how do we make sure that when our students are passing through those schools, they're not just reproducing the old ideas, but coming out ready to embrace a new kind of creativity because this generation of young people thinks differently, learns differently than previous generations. And so our schools must adapt to the students we serve now if they're going to be relevant to the needs of the future. Yeah. Dr. Hill, um, is the lecture uh, only suited for educators or can other persons attend? Parents, teachers, uh, community-minded persons, everyone. It's an open lecture. And so we, we, we really want to be able to gauge the numbers, so we ask persons to register. Um, if you have not registered as yet, uh, the event is actually later today at 5.30 mm -hmm. um, at the Daga Auditorium. You have a we, few hours. We have a few hours to, 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 for persons to attend, and so this was our final appeal to really get persons to. We, we, we do have a right cross-section of persons attending so far, registered thus far, but we really certainly want additional persons from the community, if you're so interested in really hearing some of those uh, topics, to, to come in. Uh, but register first, so you go to STA, uh, .edu settle and you will you, you can register from from there yeah is there a cost date free 
Free? Free. It's free. You yeah. Hashtag free. It's free. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many people are you uh, catering for? We, we are catering, uh, the, the auditorium holds 300 persons. Um, um, so we, we anticipate that it will be a full house. So pers that's why we're asking persons to register because uh, otherwise we'll be able to say, okay, fine, we're full. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't want persons to just showing up. And, um, um, and so we invite you to certainly register before you, before you attend. Professor, I feel that, um, that this lecture, I suspect it can be a life-changing event for individuals who attend. What do you think uh, would be the greatest takeaway from your lecture? My hope is that all kinds of stakeholders, because you know, education affects all of us. And uh, so even if you don't have children in school now, you should be concerned about the future, what the future looks like. My hope is that it'll spark thinking in Trinidad about how to use education as a resource for the future. Um, you know, we, we tend to think in very traditional ways about school and, and, and how, it, it, how we uh, perform. And uh, those models need to be adapted to current circumstances. Um, too often, when you ask a young person, how was school today? They say, boring. How often do they say, inspiring? I was learned so much, can't wait to go back, mm. and bubbling with <laughs> enthusiasm about what they are learning. That's what education should do. It should spark, should stimulate, it should um, lead to more search for knowledge. Uh, that's when we know a person's receiving a good education, when they want more. Yeah, and you know, Professor, I, I smiled when you said that because uh, that was not my experience at school. Like <laughs> inspiring, yes. exciting, I want to return, <laughs> you know. But, um, uh, Professor, if you look at what um, is happening in, in the U.S., we have seen a lot of young people uh, go into non-traditional areas, eh? Yeah. And they have gone into certain areas that um, are economically viable for them. They, they're living a good life um, off of it. But in the U.S., it's, it's a bit different to Trinidad and Tobago because of the size of the country. There is greater infrastructure there um, uh, than here in Trinidad and Tobago. You see, um, as you look at, at, the, at education in Trinidad and Tobago, you, you feel that that the time has come maybe, and it has started happening for more and more people to, to go into the less uh, traditional areas? Yeah, I think what's happening now, there's so many distractions on social media. Yes. Um, and I, it really has captured the attention of young people because so many of them are on their phones constantly. And they're looking at TikTok and they're, they're just following these trends and some of them aspire to be social influencers. And those distractions keep us away from confronting the immediate and pressing problems facing our society and the world today. Um, so we need an education that brings their attention back. It has to be as compelling as what they're seeing on their phones. Uh, and it has to provide them with the means to address, look at these issues without um, fear, um, but with a kind of sober sense that we have the ability to take these on. Um, <clears throat> We know, for example, that societies that invest in the education of women and girls have less poverty than societies that don't. But that's because women are the first teachers in many families. Um, and so we know that it can, in fact, be a resource to solve social problems. The real question is, how do we use it to address the problems we face today? Yeah, and I, I suspect, um, Dr. Hill, that this is an attempt also to address some of the challenges in education in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, yes. Yeah, what yeah. do you see as some of the major challenges? I, I think one of, one of the major challenges that we see is the, the whole idea of participation, community participation in education. We see a greater interest in parents and involvement, um, but we also, we also recognize the need for us to decolonize our thinking, <laughs> and, 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 and Professor Nagero will certainly be talking about that. Um, we, are, we are stuck in our ways, and I think one of the challenges is to really force us to do things differently. Uh, not necessarily that the old things are not good or they don't work, but if we try different approaches, we can yield uh, more rewarding results that are student-centered, more rewarding for student success. 
Um, and so we, we find a lot more interest in persons wanting to, to hear more about that because certainly mental health, well-being, health, well-being is, is an issue. And so we, we really want our, our teachers to be healthy. We want our students to be healthy as well. And so these are some issues that we are hearing and we certainly want to address some of those. But Professor, uh, this has to be a holistic buy-in, eh? mm -hmm. and this has to happen at a very young age. Very young age. Yeah. You can't come at, at 13, 14, 15, 16 and want to do that. It has to start from the primary school level. Right. Yeah. Which is why family involvement is so important at that age, so because when there's trust between the families and the schools, children will perform better. Um, but it's also so important to make sure that as we think about investing in education, that we think about the talent Trinidad loses every year. Think about how many young people are forced to go abroad to work and never come back uh, because the opportunities don't exist here. That brain drain that we've known about for so long, which is a feature of a colonized education system, has to be reversed. Our schools should be developing entrepreneurs who will go into society and take good new ideas to develop new industries that will create a more sustainable and more just society than we have right now. Yeah. So ed education should be the engine of innovation and change and progress in Trinidad. Yeah. And I don't think it's living up to that potential at the moment. Yeah, Dr. Hill, we just have about a minute again. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, I just want to say thank you for having us. Yeah. And we are, we are truly honored to be here on your show. And we look forward to um, persons attending. Uh, so thank you so much. Yeah, just give yeah. us the uh, details again well, this afternoon. At this afternoon at 5.30 at Doug Auditorium. Um, uh, and again, we want you to pre-register. Uh, register, um, so you go at sda.ue.edu uh, backslash settle, C-E-T-L. Mm -hmm. Professor, yeah. anything else you'd like to add? Just to say it's great to be here. I do hope that um, this information will be helpful. Yeah. Because I think Trinidad, many people, many of us look to Trinidad as being a beacon uh, and because of the culture here. And we hope that that will lead to the kinds of changes that the world needs now. Yeah, Professor, Doctor, it was a pleasure speaking Thank with you, so you much. this morning. Thank, Thank you. you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Thanks I wish us. you all the best later. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to another quick break again. We do have this image for you. It's from Shanice. Good morning, Shanice.